Arbin Real makes single cast Scotch whiskey some of the best on the market right now. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Ben Romick Single Malt Scotch Distillery from the Speyside in Scotland. Now, the Ben Romick Distillery has a long history. It was opened in 1898, um, but it has a history of, of closures and changes in ownership. And the most recent one uh, in their history was actually they were bought by Gordon and McPhail in, I believe, 1993. And after a series of uh, retrofittings and just really bringing the distillery up to up to the qualities that it needed to to be, make great whiskey, it reopened in 1998 and whiskey started to flow off the stills once again. Now, my experiences with Ben Romick whiskey, they've all been modern day um, for, for me anyways, um, spirit that's been distilled by um, Gordon and McPhail, the new owners of Ben Romick. My experience with Ben Romick has been fantastic. I love the 10 year old, the 15 year old, the contrast series, peat smoke, they've all been great. Um, and what I've also been learning that I really enjoy is the Ben Romick single casks. And you might see these in your market. Uh, I've seen them in the UK. I've seen them in, across Canada. I believe they're in the United States as well. These Ben Romick single casks are, are just that. They're single cast picks by stores or for clubs. Um, from really around the world where they pick their um, preferred profile from some cast samples that they received from Ben Romick. And so I wanted to talk to you about these three single casts beside me. And, and why I think it's important to talk about them is, is a couple fold. Number one, um, because if you're not in my market, you might be going, well, why should I care about a single cast from Western Canada? Here's why. I think having um, an idea, a conception of what these three separate single casts are like starts to give you an idea as to the quality of these single cask releases so that when you have one in your area, you know, hey, there is a really good chance that whiskey is top notch stuff or otherwise. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about these and review them in a moment, but it really gives you a sense of what to expect from single casks from this distillery. Um, also, um, these single casks, uh, one is still available, two are sold out, but there are sister casks that are coming to these stores. So if you are in my market, it's important to, to uh, take a look at these single casks because they were the precursors to the ones that are following them in the near future or might actually already be on store shelves. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but let's go ahead and introduce the three whiskeys I have on my left. So I'll get into more of the minutia and the specs on these bottles as we review them, but a quick introduction. The first Ben Romick single cask we want to talk about is the Angry Otter uh, Co-op uh, single cask Ben Romick. It is 12 years old, first fill, ex-bourbon cask. And I picked this up at uh, Liquor on 248th, which is uh, probably my, my favorite liquor store that, that's in my neck of the woods. Uh, it's probably the best selection out of all the stores in the Fraser Valley here at the very least. If I was to find anything that comes close to them, I'd have to go all the way to Vancouver. So I buy a lot of my whiskey at Liquor on 248th. Um, for this reason, they just got fantastic selection. They got some good prices too. Um, so I really uh, appreciate and enjoy um, what they have. And when I saw a Ben Romick single cask on their shelves, well, I just had to try it. Um, so that is the Ben Romick Angry Otter Co-op uh, single cask and that I believe is available at um, They're a chain so they have stores all throughout Lower Mainland, Fraser Valley and o Okanagan. The next one up is actually a Ben Romick single cask from my, my favorite store in Canada uh, as a whole and that is Kensington Wine Market in Calgary. I, I just can't say enough good things about the, the team there on top of that just the store itself. When we were flying to Scotland we had a layover in Calgary, and one of the few places in Calgary I went on the layover was Kensington Wine Market. I couldn't buy anything. We're on our way to, to, to Scotland. Um, I just wanted to go in the store because it's so fantastic. Their whiskey wall is incredible. Their selection's incredible, and they have really knowledgeable staff there. So I, I love Kensington Wine Market. This one is an 18-year-old first fill ex-bourbon uh, cask, uh, single cask Ben Romick. And that's actually quite old for single cask Ben Romicks. Um, it's one of the older ones uh, out there for sure. Uh, finally, uh, we have a 
single cask from the Dram Association in Victoria, British Columbia on Vancouver Island. Now the Dram Association, it's a whiskey club, as, as I just mentioned, um, and it's kind of tied in with the Straff Liquor Store in Victoria, which is probably one of my favorites in British Columbia, along with Liquor on 248th. And that is a store uh, that I don't get to visit very frequently, but I follow everything they put out there. There's a great YouTube channel that uh, the leader uh, of the Dram Association, Adam Bradshaw, runs called the Dram Association. At least I believe it's called the Dram Association right now. There was a name change recently. Regardless, they have a ton of single casks. Anything interesting that's coming to the province usually somehow winds its way there as well. So this is a nine-year-old Ben Romick single cask. Um, it is a first fill Sherry Hogshead, I believe Oloroso. Um, so I'm really excited to, to tell you all about these ones and get into more of the details. So the first single cask up here is gonna be the Ben Romick Angry Otter single cask from 2003. So still 2009, September 14th, bottled on 2021, April 10th. Uh, so 12 years old, 58.5% alcohol. It is non-chill filtered. It's natural color, which I wouldn't expect anything less from Ben Romick when it comes to single casks. Um, it's First Fill X bourbon barrel. It's cask number 731. And there was 193 bottles total of this single cask. Now, Angry Otter Co-op is one of the, the stores I shop at the most here in the Fraser Valley. And in particular, the 248th location, simply because um, they have the best selection in the Fraser Valley. They have the best selection of any store anywhere is close to me. If I needed to find something uh, that even rivaled their selection, I'd have to go to Vancouver. And even then, uh, it's debatable. So um, great staff, um, typically really good prices, and they have some great single casts. And again, the selection is is is, is fantastic. So um, I really spend way too much money there. And <laughs> I should watch my pocketbook. But when I saw this Ben Romick single cask I, I, on the shelf, I had to, had to try it. Um, that's just the way that I feel about Ben Romick these days. So let's get right to it. This is, again, a first fill X bourbon cask. Uh, one of the hallmarks of Ben Romick under Gordon and McPhail is that they only use um, first fill casks. Uh, even with their 10 year old, the 15 year old, it's all first fill X bourbon and sherry casks. And these single casks are no exception. All three of these are first fill casks. So on the nose here with the, uh, sorry, I misspoke earlier. I said 2003, it's a 2009. Um, ben Romick 2009 Angry Otter single cask. Lemon citrus, chalky like uh, Rockets candies, like the Canadian ones. A really clear uh, vanilla note and like, like vanilla icing sugar. Like this, this is a really sweet nose. It's all sweets. It's all dessert tones. Cut a, a little bit by that, um, that lemon zest. It's almost like a, a lemon tart. There's a bit of earthiness there tied to um, a, a touch of peat smoke. Yeah, it's like sweet vanilla um, birthday cake. Like it smells the way um, a Tim Hortons like birthday cake Timbit <laughs> tastes. Yeah, sugar cookie, malt. But again, uh, that earthiness from the peat is helping tie this all together and kind of bring it down. It's, it's uh, definitely helping balance it. Yeah, so many baked goods and uh, probably some shortbread in there too. It's so close to sugar cookie for me. Um, yeah, let me give this a sip on the palate. Let's taste this. Mm. Sweet malt, followed by um, some decent peat smoke. Uh, it's it's on the lighter side um, for sure, with which is um, typical for Ben Romick, but they do have heavier peated styles. This is going to be on the lower side. Um, I can't remember exactly. I believe it's somewhere between like 10 to 12 uh, PPMs. Light Ben Romick funk, which I really like the Ben Romick funk. It, it really is one of those reasons why I think people are um, 
referring to Ben Romick as like the Springbank of Speyside, not only because they're family owned and they're doing everything it seems right these days uh, with their cast management, what they're bringing, but it, it really, the style flies in the face of Speyside styling. It's it's a lot um, heavier. You got that um, that peated aspect to it. It's not your traditional space side. It's not relying on, on sherry casts necessarily e uh, either, which is uh, oftentimes a hallmark of a lot of space sides. So um, really interesting. Um, t a touch of um, a touch of ashiness to this smoke, actually. Hmm. Mm hmm. So there's a, a bit of pepper there, and um, oh, those sweets from the nose—they come through as a, like a, a white chocolate, a uh, white chocolate note, almost biscuity too. So um, something I've had recently from Costco is like these white chocolate biscottis, um, so, and and they actually have a little bit of like a lemon uh, note to them too, which is tying me back to that nose. So that that that's actually. I think that's what I'm tasting there. There's a bit of minerality um, with this palette too, which again reminds me of things like Springbank, Arden American, but in this case, this is actually profiling almost like a, a Pulteney um, with that really light peat, um, the lemon citrus. Yeah. All right, another sip here. I'm going to focus on the finish this time. Hmm. Yeah, that that's really great. That's that's awesome. Um, more pepper on the front of the tongue uh, than I like peppery uh, like heat, almost like cracked black pepper. Just a bit too much of it, say, uh, with my food. That sort of vibe. Um, however, on the finish, that Ben Romick machine shop funk once again. Some eucalyptus. Um, oak that smoke is actually heaviest i'd say from the peat on the finish as opposed to the palette so while it's light on the palette a bit heavier on the finish i like that um that helps make the the finish linger and last longer some licorice and um yeah some licorice and maybe some bitter herbs as well really interesting whiskey um this whiskey i'm not gonna do it right now because it takes so much time but I played around with water with this whiskey, and I prefer this whiskey with water um, the most. And actually, I'm gonna add the water to it so I can enjoy it later, but I can tell you what I um, experienced with the water that I added to this whiskey is that it um, it really made it more floral. Um, it added some more herbs um, to the, the, the nose. Um, so the nose really, really perked up, and it, it actually made the nose a bit more earthy too. It was almost like uh, candied vegetables, like, um, candied yams or carrots, um, which was really interesting. And follow that up with, again, all those same dessert tones, like a croissant filled with like almond paste is the way I would describe it and dusted with sugar, um, like icing sugar. It was really lovely. That's where this whiskey shines is with water. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a sip now. Mm. Mm -hmm. With that water, a lot of that heat is is tamped down. And I, I like a bit of spice uh, to my whiskey, but I also like it to not take away from the other flavors I'm, I'm experiencing. And this is one of the beautiful things about single cask, cask strength whiskeys, is that you're getting a, that natural cask strength, which means you can lower it to the percentage that you're comfortable with. You can lower it to the percentage you think this whiskey drinks the best. Yeah. Oh man, great finish. Again, that eucalyptus, that smoke, it kind of built up into the finish. There's fruits, there's pears, there's peppermint. Yeah, this is why we want cast strength. So we can make that decision instead of having it made for us. This is a beautiful whiskey. I really enjoyed this Ben Romick. And uh, we're gonna save the score for a moment here uh, as we go ahead and consider these other two Ben Romick single casks. All right, next up is gonna be the Kensington Wine Market Ben Romick single cast. This is the 2003 I was thinking about earlier. Uh, it was distilled 2003, January 27th. Uh, it was 
bottled on the same date as the Angry Otter single cask, actually. Uh, so uh, April 10th, 2021, it's 18 years old, 57.2% alcohol. This is once again, a first fill X bourbon cask. The only thing it seems uh, Ben Romick does is those first fills, non-chill filtered, natural color, all great st uh, uh, stats there. 168 bottles were available of this one. And to my knowledge, this is a heavier peated Ben Romick style. Um, this isn't as light as the Angry Otter uh, when it comes to phenols. Um, now, Kensington Wine Market in Calgary is probably, no, it's just, it is. It, it's my favorite whiskey shop in Canada. When we were traveling to Scotland uh, for a trip, we had a layover in Calgary. And one of the few places I actually visited while in Calgary was Kensington Wine Market. Um, I just couldn't help myself. They have this amazing whiskey wall. Their staff is, is so knowledgeable and, and, and just always want, wanting to chat whiskey. And their selection is, I, I really think, second to none um, for the country. So Calgary, Alberta, they have a gem of a store there. And I'm, I'm a huge fan. I trust the quality of each and every store pick they make. They're probably some of the best store picks um, on the continent. Um, they aren't afraid to send samples back to distilleries when they don't like what they've received. Uh, they don't feel the pressure to pick something just because they they have the samples. Um, so yeah, I, I trust um, their knowledge and their palates for picking an absolute banger of a store pick. So I'm really excited to go ahead and taste this one for you guys. I actually even have my, my Kensington Wine Market glass here. Uh, it was a gift uh, from Tyler. Thank you so much, Tyler. Um, yeah, that's, that's a beauty glass. That's my only uh, Crystal Glencairn, but I'm, I'm excited about it. So on the nose here. Some similarities, some similarities from uh, the 12 year old Angry Otter to the Kensington Wine Market, but I'm getting again, like vanilla malt, but orange marmalade. It's more the citrus tone I'm getting. It's way more on orange than lemon for me right now. You can pick up on the oak of the extra age right away too. But yet a similarity once again, is that chalky sort of minerality um, from like, again, like a Rockets candy vibe, like a hard powdery candy. Which again is something that I find in Arden American. I also found it in the, um, in a lot of the ex-bourbon uh, spring banks. Uh, the uh, spring bank 12 cast strength ex-bourbon had that in spades. Oh, the fruit on this, pineapple. Oh, all all tropicals for sure. Like, I like a mango too. The smoke is present. It's more present on the nose than the Angry Otter cask. I wouldn't say it's heavy by any means though on the nose. The tropical fruits and citrus tones are turned up a notch in this one for sure uh, compared to the Angry Otter. Same with the oak. The sweets, the like the sweet dessert tones are turned down a bit. Um, we're not getting so much of that um, sweet icing sugar vibe, birthday cake vibe, shortbread cookie, all that stuff. It's it's more on the fruits here. Oh yeah. So sweet as sour effect going on here. It's almost like sweet and sour chicken sauce with like chunks of pineapple. Like that's the the image it's evoking in my mind right now. It's a great nose. All right, let's uh, take a sip here. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. That is lovely. Um, the palate, if I'm just going to talk about the, the mouthfeel, it, it's much more rounded. The, the sharp corners, the peppery heat, um, the spice I got uh, from the 12 year old. Um, the extra six years has really smoothed this out very nice. It smoothed out all the sharper corners, all the sharper edges. Vibrant, like grilled pineapple, um, malt, oat cakes. Um, yeah, there's, oh, and the building earthy peat smoke um, on the finish right now. There's just wafting big smoke right now. I believe it's about... Um, 42 phenol parts per million for the heavier peated Benaromic. Um, I could be wrong there, fact check me there. Uh, there wasn't a, a phenol count attached to this bottle, but it drinks more like a long row style peat than uh, a Springbank uh, style peat and ergo 
I think it's a heavier one. I have seen 42 attached to like the contrast series before. So that's where I'm getting that number. Um, another sip here, man, this is divine. Hmm. That beautiful, amazing Benromic industrial funk is turned up a notch. Um, there's a touch of like Lapsan Suk Chang um, tea, smoky tea. Um, bit of time, um, oddly enough. So again, herbs, herbs are pulling uh, from both of them. Leather, yeah, like a worn leather. Vanilla, coconut. Oh my word. The sweets are there too. There's some butterscotch. That big, that big peat. Um, the vanilla on this with that that smoke, it's almost like a um, like a Captain Black cigar. If you ever had the, the Captain Black sweets, they had this uh, sweet vanilla tip to the cigar. We, we smoked them back in high school. It was, it was silly, but um, it's almost that same effect of, of that, that tobacco note along with the smoke and the vanilla tip. Um, yeah, that's really good. This is fruity, this is funky, this is sweet, this is smoky. I don't really know what else you want from an ex-bourbon single cask. This... Oh man, this is a whiskey. Hmm. Yeah. This drinks a lot like... Um, like a heavier peated version of that Springbank 12 cast strength, 100% X bourbon that I uh, mentioned earlier. I have that bottle open in my um, cabinet right now. Um, I should probably do a side by side of the two, but the, the same sort of notes it's hitting. Um, the only difference I think really for me is that the peating level, yeah. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. I have had this with water. I prefer this without water. I don't think it needs it. I think. It, the only thing it does really is it kind of emphasizes a little bit of the fruits on the palate, uh, not palate, on the nose. Um, there already was barely any heat on the palate, but it might take a little bit off that, but it really dampens the finish. It's a much less impactful finish when I added water to this. So I don't like to, to mess around with this. I'm not gonna bug around with this Kensington wine market uh, with a uh, single cask with water. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Once again, once we've done all three, I'll go ahead and I'll give each of these the mark. The last of our Benromic single casts that we're gonna try tonight is, is this Benromic Dram Association single cast. Now what's the Dram Association? Well, the Dram Association is a whiskey club located in Victoria on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And it's associated with the Straff Liquor Store in Victoria, which is my favorite liquor store on Vancouver Island. I don't get to visit it often, but I really relish the opportunity when I do. They have a fantastic uh, YouTube channel. It's run by Adam Bradshaw. He's kind of the leader for the Dram Association. I believe he's the founder. Um, and he has a, a YouTube channel from of the same name uh, on YouTube. You should check that out. He does great stuff. And this is a single cast that they picked for the club and for the store. Um, so this is distilled uh, on, uh, oh gosh, June 18th, 2012. Bottled 2021-09-22. Uh, it's nine years old, 57.6% alcohol, non shuffles or natural color again. But this, the diff big difference here, and the reason why I did these two first, then went to the nine-year-old, is because it is a first fill sherry hogshead. It's a cast number 351. There was only 123 bottles of this one. So the least number of bottles by far on this Dram Association one, which is really interesting, really peculiar, even with um, being the youngest. So that, that's interesting. Maybe there was a cask split or maybe it was a, a leaky cask. Maybe the, the angels were really greedy. I don't know. I don't think the angels could be that greedy. Um, in any event, um, let's get to tasting, nosing and tasting this, again, first fill, Sherry Hogshead. Okay, I know immediately what this reminds me of, this type of nose, oh man. I'll, I'll hold my water a bit with that that for a moment though. Sticky, sweet, stewed raisins. Almost a touch like salty. Um, this is some dirty sherry funk for sure, which I am not, um, I'm not one to uh, turn my nose up to that. I like the dirty sherry funk. 
almost like a Edredor signatory um, type of uh, sherry nose. That uh, ten-year-old single cask uh, series that they do. Yeah, it's salty off the top. Um, yeah. But an earthy sherry, like black coffee, leather. Sherry funk is just all over this. The fruits, though, again, the, the stewed raisins, the prunes. Um, once again, I'd say uh, like a very, like a, an orange spread, an orange marmalade. There's the lightest touch of peat. It's kind of covered in that sherry cask, so it's harder to find. But that's salt. It's it's almost profiling like Vegemite to type of saltiness. Like that is. Oh man. Yeah. This to me, because I'm getting a big cola note here too, and actually like a, a a birch beer, like a birch root beer. This reminds me a lot of a Springbank 15 nose. That uh, that dirty almost almost like touch of sulfur sort of springbank sherry cask yeah yeah like oh man oh yeah there's some berries in there now too i remember getting chocolate in this before i'm not getting it right now I've heard um, Adam Bradshaw from the Dram Association on one of his videos for the SMWS. He referenced a, a tasty note, which I'm actually I'm, I'm getting off of this a nosing note, um, which it, it smells like the wooden ship at the Royal BC Museum. Like the, it's like a wooden sailing ship, but specifically the one that's in that wing of the museum. He mentioned that in regards to I think a uh, Glen Talkers, um, so a different bottle, but. That's the vibe I'm getting, a really old wooden sailing ship for those Ron Burgundy fans out there. Yeah. Okay, let's taste this. Okay, there is spice. There's there's almost like a chili, chili spice on that. But just after that, then you get this sweet, syrupy, um, orange spread again on toast, jam, Big jam, um, thick spread, yeah. Coca-Cola right now. And some coffee dregs, like black coffee. And now again, that Ben Romick funk is, is on the finish with that peat. And I wish I had a better way to, than saying just the Springbank funk or Ben Romick funk. Again, it profiles as that, as that like dirty um, industrial machine shop, like oily rig sort of thing. Uh, it's just not as strong as you find on the Springbanks. It's just a lighter touch with it, but it's still, it's the same sort of funkiness. Hmm. Moving past the fruits, uh, again, that smoke, that smoke is bigger now. Some leather, like really nice worn leather. And, and, and going on to the sweets now, it was like, it was a, like a creme brulee um, dessert tone, like maple syrup uh, flap on like flapjacks on pancakes with some blueberries. Um, wow. That's a fantastic palette. I'm really loving this. Um, oh, there's like bitter dark chocolate on the finish too. That sweet peat and cherry uh, combination is just magical. Um, yeah, these Ben Romick single casks are just stunners. They just floor me. Um, one more sip. We'll finish this up and then we'll get to the scores. Yeah, wood varnish, Coca-Cola, bitter chocolate, smoke, funk. Oh man, that maple syrup again. Those earthy tones help ground all that sweetness. Um, the finish is, is, is nice, it's long. 
it, it, it holds. I don't need to take another sip immediately, but I really want to because it is so damn good. The sherry cask is doing a lot of the heavy lifting here, um, but I think it's worth it. In, in a way, again, it's somewhat like the Springbank 15. And in this case, at only nine years old, that sherry cask, I think, is covering up a lot of the youth of this cask as well. I honestly found with water that this cask uh, had less body, same aromas, same flavors, but it just wasn't as oily and as viscous. And again, the finish just lacked the same resolve uh, as the as the cast strength. So I, I prefer not to add water to this one. So the only one I really prefer to add water to was the Angry Otter one. It did make it better. It tamed down some of that peppering. And um, and and yeah, I am just, uh, again, astounded at the quality of these Ben Romick single casks. So let's get to the scores. For scores for these Ben Romick single casks, I'm gonna start with the Angry Otter 12 year old. We're gonna go in order of, of we tasted them. And the 12 year old here, it's it's a great whiskey. It's a great single cask whiskey. There's a lot of uh, wonderful flavors in it. And if you like sweets, if you want a sweet uh, bomb uh, that is not about the sherry, but emphasizes, uh, again, a lot of those sort of sweet dessert tones that you get with baked goods, with uh, like birthday cake, with, with uh, white chocolate, these sorts of things with a touch of peat and a really robust uh, palate. This is a fantastic single cask. Again, I did prefer it with water. Uh, I did find it a little bit hot without it. And um, yeah, it's a great example of a first fill X bourbon um, Ben Romick. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I'm gonna give this bottling an 87.5 out of 100. Um, I think that's a very fair score. It was about $160 Canadian for it. Um, I think that's a fair price. I don't think it's it's too high or too low. I think that's, that's right where it should be. The Kensington Wine Market single cask, again, first fill, ex-bourbon, 18 years old. That thing is damn divine. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, again, it's not the, the best whiskey I've ever had, so I really shouldn't overstate this, but it is just perfectly in my wheelhouse right now for summer, for if I want peat, I want it to be ex-bourbon most likely. This is a damn good whiskey. It's so fruity. Um, and it just seems to be hitting everything perfectly. I think I got this bottle on sale for $170 Canadian. I got a backup bottle of it because I cracked it, I tried it, and went, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna need another one of those. So I gave this whiskey a 90 out of 100. Um, and yeah, like I said, would I purchase it again? Yes, I would, I did. And unfortunately, this is sold out now. Uh, but more on that in a moment. There's a, a development that you may want to know about if you're in Canada in regards to uh, the Kensington wine market for Philux bourbon casks. Finally, the uh, Dram Association Sherry Cask Single Cask Ben Romick. This was a really great sweet peat uh, sherry profile. Um, all that funky sort of reminders of the Springbank 15 sort of nose and palate. I really liked it. Uh, if I got a, kid, a cast strength version of Springbank 15, I'd love to put it up against this and see what happened. Uh, we don't get Springbank imported into British Columbia. It just doesn't happen anymore. It hasn't happened since I think 2015, um, which is all the more reason why I'm just so thrilled that we have Ben Romick's single casts like this coming in. They are really saving the day for us, uh, for, for all of us who really want that Springbank adjacent sort of profile. Um, yeah, can't say enough good about this. This is just like the Kensington Wine Market cast. This is also sold out, this nine-year-old. Um, I'm gonna give this an 89 out of 100. It is just a shade below. It's a different profile, but it just doesn't come to the quality of that Kensington Wine Market single cast. That thing is special. Um, and again, the Angry Otter, it, I think it was the last one of these three to arrive because it just takes longer for things to get to BC, it seems. Um, that one, again, is still available. Now, what I wanted to talk about in regards to these single casts is I think Ben Romick might be the most consistently good single cast program in Scotch whiskey right now. It seems like they're not missing on these. I haven't heard of a single dud single cast coming out of Ben Romick. They all seem to be special in their own way and they all have a, an engaging flavor profile that makes it worth it every single time. These are becoming an insta buy for me. That, I mean, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Again, if I have the cash in my wallet and I can responsibly do so, of course, they are the first thing I look at on the shelf for, yeah, I want that. 
So I'm really impressed. I can't say enough good things. I only hope that this single cast program remains as ro robust as this and continues to bring us this great quality and these releases. Now, why is this important for you? Well, again, getting a look at three different single casts gives you an idea of the quality of these releases. And, and I think you can purchase with confidence the Benromic single casts in your market. Furthermore, um, if you are in my market, as I mentioned, the Angry Otter one is still available. Kensington Wine Market sold out, but they, I believe they just started pre-orders for their next Benromic single cask, which I believe is a 19 year old first fill ex-bourbon cask. Um, so that is coming, that is on its way. Furthermore, the Dram Association for their anniversary just went ahead and received um, earlier this year, an 11 year old first fill sherry cask, Benromic single cask. I don't have that one in my hands yet. I probably should be purchasing that. Um, I'm hoping to get over to Vancouver Island to pick it up myself. Otherwise, I'll probably have to pay to have it shipped. Um, but you can still purchase that one, e even though you can't get this nine-year-old. That 11-year-old, I'm sure, will do you very, very well. This has been a long video, guys. I really appreciate you sticking with it to the end. I hope the payoff is worth it. What I'm trying to hammer home here is I think um, you can buy with confidence the Ben Romick single casks in your market. I'm doing that in my market uh, without hesitation. Thank you once again for being here for Whiskey on the West Coast. If you could comment down below if you have any experience with Ben Romick single casks uh, yourself, or if not, um, what's your favorite Ben Romick bottling that you've had to date? I am in love with this distillery and I'm falling deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole every day. And I'm just hoping that you join me. Until next time, I'm gonna take a sip of this Kensington Wine Market. Ben Romick single cask and uh, hope to see you here again on the West Coast soon. Slanja. <laughs>